Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 43. In today's episode, we're going to do a little introduction to process safety management. Um, this will um, th- this will be just a um, introductory one and uh, followed on by ones where we'll sit down and break down the 14 elements. But for right now, we're just kind of talking who's in the program, who's not in the program, and just a very brief overview of the 14 elements. So... Let's get started. So this regulation is going to be um, applicable to the United States only. It's found under the OSHA regulation 29 CFR 1910.119. And it has appendix A through D. Some of them are a mandatory and some of them are uh, describing a very good practice on really how to sit down and uh, implement this program. Um, and its formal name is Process Safety Management of Highly Hazardous Chemicals. And when we look at the purpose of this, it's obviously to uh, save lives, not have people injured, be want to not pollute, you know, and all that stuff. But, but this is what they put down for the uh, purpose. So requirements for preventing or minimizing the consequences of catastrophic releases of toxic, reactive, flammable, or explosive chemicals. So as a uh, introduction, let's talk about who's covered in this. And this is where I'm going to, um, in in many cases, specifically read right from the CFR because there's a little bit of confusion out there. We'll start to talk about pounds of something and there's a threshold planning and all kinds of. So let's just kind of sit, sit down and say, who's actually in this? So if we look at the definition itself, a process that involves a chemical at or above the specified threshold quantities listed in Appendix A. So Appendix A in this is is, uh, called the list of highly hazardous chemicals, toxics, and reactives. And this is going to be one of those that you have that mandatory. Whatever it says for that threshold planning, and you're over that threshold planning, you have to have PSM. In. Let's look at a little bit of a catch-all, but yet not a catch-all when we read the definitions. So the next one is a process which involves a Category 1 flammable gas as defined as in um, 1910-1200C, which is going to be found under Housecom, or a flammable liquid with a flash point below 100 degrees Fahrenheit on site in one location and in a quantity of 10,000 pounds or more, except for, and this is where we find out who's not going to be part of this kind of this catch-all of the flammable gas or flammable uh, liquid, hydrocarbon fuels used solely for workplace consumption as a fuel. And they say propane used for comfort heating, gasoline for vehicle reheat, Refueling, if such fuels are not part of a process containing another highly hazardous chemical covered by the standard. So basically, if you're going to, you well, uh, if you're going to use this, just like it says in the um, examples, propane is used for comfort heat. Now, if propane is used to fire a process vessel, you know, and thus part of the whole well, that's a different story. Gasoline for vehicle refueling, that makes sense. There's a lot of places all over the country that exceed that 10,000 pounds uh, quantity, but literally it's a gas station. You know, does it mean that you don't have hazards there and all that stuff? But by the, by the definition, the tank is storing the fuel, and then, of course, the fuel is then pumped through the pumps to the car and uh, all that stuff. Let's look at flammable liquids then. So... The definition here is a flammable uh, liquid with a flash point below 100 degrees Fahrenheit stored in atmospheric tanks or transferred, which are kept below their normal boiling point without the benefit of chilling or refrigeration. So this is where we specifically have to go back and look at the chemical itself. I I should say the flammable liquid itself look for the flashpoint, look at how we're storing it and we're using it and all that good stuff then. And we'll go over over a couple of um, examples a little little later on in this then. So, 
So, and who's not covered in this also are retail facilities, oil or gas well drilling or servicing operations, or the, uh, the normally unoccupied remote facilities. Let's sit down and look at the 14 elements of process safety management. So if you do fall into the program, you now have to look at how are you going to implement the 14 elements that you're going to find. One, employee participation. Two, process safety information. Three, process hazard analysis. This is where we're going to sit down and look at all of the hazards. And not just that, but how do you go back and minimize the hazards of the process? Operating procedures. You have to have a way that people are being trained to operate these um, vessels, to operate the process, whatever you're going to make in a safe fashion. Contractors. Typically, we have to bring on contractors to do very specialized work. And maybe they're running uh, chemical lines. I should say brand new lines, which, which will run a chemical. But you're bringing them onto the site that has process safety management um, on it then. You have to do a pre-startup safety review before you're starting up the process. You know, Are you really covering everything? Are you capturing every single thing that you can possibly do to minimize the hazards out there? Number eight, mechanical integrity. So everything has a service life. Rust will attack things. Uh, and this is where you're going to look at mechanical integrity of your process. Not all chemicals are going to be compatible with all of the different process um, vessels out there, um, steel, the plastic lines, the, so not, not everything is 100% uh, compatible with everything. Hot work permit. This is super important. If you have anything that's flammable, um, you can think you're fixing something or you're adding to the process or you're doing something and now uh, you've, uh, You've caused a fire, an explosion, all that stuff. Management of change out there. What happens when you're changing the process? Are you decreasing the boiling point? Are you increasing the boiling point? Are you adding or subtracting pressure? You know, so there's there's a lot of different management of uh, change out there. Uh, there's also uh, what happens when you you uh, change the pump and the motor and things. So you really have to kind of think about the change that's out there. Number 11, so incident investigation. Number 12, emergency planning and response. Number 13, compliance audits. And then finally, number 14, trade secrets. So um, we want the information documented you know, and all that stuff, but we also understand uh, that there are certain trade secrets out there, and we certainly don't want to give the uh, recipe away where where somebody else can turn around and make it for exactly the same price or even cheaper and all that stuff. So we want to make sure that we're um, keeping, uh, keeping a hold of any trade secrets out there. And that's it, episode number 43. This was just a very brief introduction to process safety management. And the next couple of um, podcasts, we'll sit down, we'll break down the individual steps. Uh, in the next one, we're going to kind of look at the uh, common chemicals uh, that you'll find out there. There's a, there's a huge list. There's no way we can cover all this list. But if we sat down and kind of said, hey, these are these are kind of the common ones you find out in um, industry that will really help us uh, to narrow down. And we'll go over a couple of examples of the catch-alls that fall in, into the exceeding 10,000 pounds. So episode number 43, we are done. Everybody have a safe day.